This is a picture test in practical histology of the gastrointestinal tract. You may use the video as a revision for the topic or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, pause the video at the beginning of each slide and take your time in reading the question and coming up with the answer, then replay the video to confirm your answer and listen to further comments and explanations. Identify the epithelium. What is its function? In which layer 1, 2, or 3 would you expect to find nerve cell bodies? The epithelium in this section is stratified squamous epithelium, non-keratinizing. It consists of multiple layers of cells, so it is stratified. The most superficial layers are squamous, thus it is stratified squamous epithelium, although the deeper layers are polyhedral or cuboidal in shape, but the name of the epithelium is derived from the most superficial layer. This is a section of the gut tube showing four distinct functional layers that characterize the gut tube, mucosa, submucosa, muscularis externa, or also it's called muscularis propria, and the adventitia. In the gut tube, this type of epithelium, the stratified squamous epithelium, is found in the oral cavity, pharynx, esophagus, and anal canal, and it serves as a protective epithelium. This is the answer for section A. Now let's deal with section B. In the GI tract, parasympathetic ganglia are concentrated in plexuses in the wall. A ganglion, by definition, is a collection of nerve cell bodies outside the central nervous system. Parasympathetic ganglion cells are present in the wall of the gut in two locations. In the submucosa, where they form the submucosal plexus, also called Meissner plexus, the submucosa here is not labeled. This is the region of the submucosa here, where you can see connective tissue containing some blood vessels and containing mucous glands. However, the postganglionic fibers supply the glands, as I mentioned, like the one that is present here, and also they supply the smooth muscle of the muscularis mucosa. You can see the muscularis mucosa here. This is the deepest part of the mucosa, and it is adjacent to the submucosa, so it is supplied from the plexus that is present in the submucosa. Note that the muscularis mucosa here is not that well formed. This is a characteristic feature of the esophagus. It is interrupted in the wall of the esophagus. In other parts of the gut where it is well formed, it produces local movements and folding of the mucosa. Now, the second place where the parasympathetic ganglion cells are located is in between the two layers of the muscularis propria. You can see here the inner layer and outer layer of the muscularis propria or the muscularis externa, also called. This plexus is called the myenteric plexus or Erbach plexus and therefore it is located in the layer marked 2. Postganglionic fibers, they supply the surrounding smooth muscles of the muscularis propria, which as you can see them here, they consist of an inner circular and outer longitudinal fibers and are responsible for mixing of the contents of the gut tube and uh, uh, their propulsion from one region to another. It must be mentioned here that both of these plexuses, whether the submucosal or the myenteric plexus, both of them, they contain sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers, but the sympathetic fibers are already postsynaptic, already postganglionic, having already relayed in the cell bodies which are located in the prevertebral and paravertebral ganglia. While, as in other organs in the body, the parasympathetic fibers, they synapse in small ganglia which are located in or close to the organ involved. Thus, the nerve cell bodies which are present whether in layer marked 2 or whether they are present in the submucosa, these cell bodies are parasympathetic. Which part of the gut is represented in this section? Identify the type of the gland marked in the interrupted line Note the epithelium here. It is a simple columnar epithelium with multiple mucus secreting goblet cells. And you can see here that there are no villi. 
villi are characteristic feature of the small intestine. No villi, so this is not a small intestine. However, in this section, we can identify crypts like the one that is delineated by the interrupted line. So absorptive epithelium with the crypts and no villi is a feature of the large intestine. The crypts are in fact extending down from the surface to the underlying connective tissue and they are in the form of simple tubular glands. As you can see, they are rarely sectioned along their entire length. The presence of large number of goblet cells here can be understood as the feces passing along the large intestine and becoming progressively dehydrated, the mucus becomes increasingly important in protecting the mucosa from trauma. A goblet cell is considered as a unicellular gland. Identify the type of cells A and B in terms of secretion. Exocrine glands such as this one consist of a secretory unit called the asinus and a duct. The duct is lined by surface epithelium. An exocrine glandular cell secretes its products through its apical surface. So you can see here that there is a lumen in, in these asini. A centrally located lumen appears in some of the asini because the secretion goes to the apex of the asinar cells. Now, although this is not part of the question, but this is a section of the sublingual gland in which the asini are mainly mucus, but some of them, they show a crescentic arrangement of serous asini called serous demilunes. The cells of a serous asinus secretes proteins and glycoproteins and their cytoplasm and inclusions reflect this. The nucleus is typically rounded or oval and occupies the basal part of the cytoplasm. You can see that clearly in the group of cells marked as A. As I mentioned that there is a machinery for protein synthesis. So generally the cytoplasm of the serous cells appears basophilic because of the presence of rough endoplasmic reticulum. Again, all these features are typically represented in A, serous secreting cells. Now the cells of the mucus asinus synthesize and secrete mucigene granules that contain glycosylated protein, extensively glycosylated protein, and this secretion product is water soluble and lost during routine tissue preparations. So the cytoplasm of mucus cells appears empty in most conventional stained sections. And this is represented in the group of cells marked as B. Note here that the nucleus of the mucus secreting cell is usually flattened against the base of the cell. If you compare it with the rounded nucleus of the serous secreting cell. In the mucus secreting cell, the nucleus is usually flattened against the base of the cell, and this is because of the large amount of the stored product in the apical cytoplasm, typically represented in B. Which part of the gut is shown in the section B specific? Identify the discrete cells at A and the collective formation at B. Note that the mucosal surface is made up of finger-like projections. These are the villi, while the mucosa between the base of the villi is uh, formed into crypts. This is a villus, finger-like projection, and then it goes into a crypt and then as a villus and so on. So this is a, a typical arrangement of the mucosa in the small intestine. The crypts are simple tubular glands. They are called the crypts of Leiberkuhn. The villi increase the surface area for absorption. And in this slide, which uses the PASS method, periodic acid shift, PASS will uh, stain the carbohydrates and including the mucines with the strong magenta color that we can see here. So the cells A and B, they are either goblet cells, which is, are represented in A, present either on the surface of the villus or within the gland, within the uh, crypt. They are discrete, scattered, not collected in one place. And the majority of the epithelial cells of the mucosa, they are, as you can see, they are not pass staining because they are absorptive cells, enterocytes. 
goblet cells here they produce mucin to lubricate the intestinal contents and protect the epithelium now the mucus containing cells which are represented in B and collected together they are actually present in the submucosa you can see here like these are traces of muscularis mucosa and deep to it is the submucosa and here this is the outer limit of the submucosa where there is the muscularis externa or muscularis propria this collection of mucus secreting cells in the submucosa constitute a feature that is unique to the duodenum and they are called the Brunner's glands the ducts they pass up through the muscularis mucosae to open into the crypts they secrete an alkaline fluid which is composed of mucus which exerts an anti-acid function uh, by coating the duodenal epithelium therefore protecting it from the acid chyme that uh, comes um, from the stomach these glands will disappear in the remaining part of the small intestine in the um, uh, jejunum or the ileum because the the acid reaction of the content is going to be neutralized in the duodenum List two parts of the gut tube where you would expect to find this kind of epithelium and identify the junction B the epithelium in the magnified inset A is stratified squamous epithelium non keratinizing it consists of as you can see multiple layers of cells so it is stratified the most superficial layers are squamous so it is stratified squamous uh, epithelium although the deeper layers as you can see them here they are either polyhedral or tall cuboidal in shape this type of epithelium which is a protective type of epithelium in the gut is found in the oral cavity in the pharynx and the esophagus and the anal canal now let's look at the junction B there is an abrupt transition of epithelium note that the epithelium on the left side of the arrow is a simple columnar epithelium with multiple mucus secreting goblet cells there are no villi but there are crypts no villi so this is not a small intestine but there are crypts so this is a large intestine to the right side of the junction is a stratified squamous epithelium so we are at the anal canal and the junction is the recto anal junction it should be mentioned that this is the histological recto anal junction and that it should be differentiated from the anatomical anorectal junction the anatomical anorectal junction is the junction between the rectum and the anal canal while the junction that is shown here in this slide is the junction between the upper part of the anal canal that carries features of the rectum hence it is histologically named as rectal and the lower part of the anal canal hence anal embryologically speaking the mucous membrane of the upper part of the anal canal is derived from endoderm of the hindgut and has similar features of the rectum in being lined by uh, columnar epithelium not only that its blood supply nerve supply uh, correspond to that of the rectum while the lower part of the anal canal is derived from ectoderm from the region which is called the proctodium and it is thus because it's derived from ectoderm it is lined by stratified squamous epithelium and it has different neurovascular supplies from that of the upper part of the anal canal so what we are looking at here in this slide is a section of the anal canal whether on the right side or on the left side but the histological features on the left side are those of the rectum of the large intestine so that's why the junction is called the recto anal junction histologically speaking identify the cells a what is their function and what is the main type of cells located in layer B first let's identify the organ this section shows the mucosa of the part of the gut tube the lining epithelium is a simple columnar epithelium and in this stain which also contains periodic acid shift pass the stain uh, stains the carbohydrates including mucines therefore that this simple columnar epithelium is composed of mucus cells and these mucus cells they cover the luminal surface and the walls of the 
pits. These columnar cells in A, they are packed with cytoplasmic mucigene granules, and that's why, again, I repeat, they take the deep magenta color. And this is the lining epithelium of the stomach, where these mucus cells in A, they secrete mucus that protects the epithelium from autodigestion. This mucus also contains protective bicarbonate ions in the deeper layers of the surface mucus coat to neutralize the acidity of the stomach. Note that deep to the luminal surface, there are straight tubular glands. Again, you can see many of these straight tubular glands like the one here. And to make sure that they are gastric glands, you can see the parietal cells. This is an example of a parietal cell here, for example, large cells with eosinophilic cytoplasm and a centrally located nucleus, giving it a fried egg appearance. Most of them, they are located in the upper part of the gland, of the gastric glands, although they are also present in other parts of the gland. They are characteristic for the stomach. They produce the HCL. B represents the deepest layer of the mucosa. And this is the muscularis mucosa, which is formed of smooth muscle fibers. It is, as you can see, located outside the lamina propria of the mucosa and separates it from the connective tissue of the submucosa. The muscularis mucosa is composed of several thin layers of uh, smooth muscle uh, fibers. They are oriented in different ways, and they usually they keep the mucosal surface and the underlying glands in a constant state of gentle agitation also uh, so they expel the contents of the glands whether gastric glands or the crypts and they enhance the contact between epithelium and the contents of the lumen there are just fine movements are taken taking place here in this layer unlike the uh, stronger uh, movements that uh, are applied by the muscularis externa or muscularis propria, which is located uh, at an outer location.